times men acted like lunatics on paternity court. Did I ask for background singers? No. Okay, then I need you to be quiet. She's clearly had sex with somebody. Clearly? Yes, visibly. She had something in her hair. It was not gel and it was not shampoo. Drilled, kept drilling, and ended up in the paternity court when Mr. Meyer contented that Miss Fisher is the serial cheater and has been busy with a whole bunch of guys. Whereas the plaintiff asserted that the defendant has abandoned her and her children, saying that he was not the father. And now she wanted to prove him wrong by DNA diagnostics. Let's move to the plaintiffs. Miss Fisher, you say you thought you found the perfect older man to start a relationship and family with, but after having your first child and getting pregnant again, you claim he abandoned you and denied he fathered your second child, Xavier. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. As the trial proceeded, it turned out that the baby's dad acted like a total maniac and left baby mama as soon as he heard about the pregnancy news. Oh boy. Why stoop so low when you already had one baby with this woman? That's what irresponsible, crazy people do. After having our first son together, we lived together for about three years. We found out that after the new year, we were gonna have a second son. Him knowing that, he decided he didn't want anything to do with me. I ended up living with another family member just to better our lives. We were doing a switch off, back and forth, watching our son together. However, Mr. Meyer stated that they were not together at the time baby was conceived. Oh, come on, man. We all knew that was more like bluffing. Are you out of your mind or has your crazy brain just made up things like that? We were not together when she got pregnant with Xavier. She cheated on me multiple times. I came home, I found my mattress flipped over. I came home, I found multiple people in my bedroom. Aha! Baby mama revealed that she has even named her son after the defendant. And he was still standing out there acting stupid while he testified that he had no doubts because of the baby's name, because he wasn't a junior. Yeah, like if that makes sense. Man, you need to grow up. It looks like you just want to be shut off. Yes, I have a three-year-old son who is almost four years old this year, named him after Michael. So he is a oh, junior. It doesn't, she wouldn't even name him Junior. She named him the second. Well, my son is the second. That's the same thing. I wanted to be Junior. She, she wouldn't let me. OK, the second. I think second she knew it wasn't my son. That's why she wouldn't do it. That's so she gave name. him the second? So she named him the second instead. <laughs> yes, Your Honor. Ms. Fisher further told that she was overwhelmed when she got the news of her second baby but the man wiped it off by backing off. Over which the alleged testifies that he believed he was tricked into her paternity trap. I mean, stop it, man. Were you a kid whom she bribed by a candy? Honor, yes, I was excited to find out a couple days after the new year of 2016 that I was gonna be having another child. We had a house, we both were working at the time, it, everything was okay. One night, I find him crying in bed, ask him what's wrong. He asks me, you know, to not be around him anymore, but I'm trying to figure out why, because we're having another child, we already have one. He was not around for any of the doctor's appointments for the second child. Oh, the guy revealed that his doubts were confirmed when his neighbor told him someone was crawling out of his window. But Miss Fisher denied his claims. Even Judge Lake was stunned at the show going on in her courtroom. Who was that? Who crawled out the window? I would like to know myself. Oh, uh, you were there, obviously. I mean, the thing your that you're made it Wait up. a minute, your neighbor told you someone was like- My neighbor said, hey, is your house broken into? I'm like, I don't know, I can go check, I don't think. Why would my house be broken? He said, I seen somebody crawling out of your window. I said, really? So I go run to my house. Nothing's gone or nothing like that. I can only assume it was a guy she was messing around with. No one took nothing. Guys, hold on to your ears, because what he brought up next will blow your mind. He testified that he had seen something terrible that sparked his doubts even more. But I am still wondering why he would believe such insane things so easily about his girlfriend or if he is just doing it to get rid of responsibilities. Okay, I'm having a bad day. I, I'm, I'm working at the time. We were working at the same place. I had to work a double. I was sick and not feeling good. I finally get off work. I'm calling and calling and calling. She doesn't answer the phone. I'm upset. I start walking. She comes to pick me up. She's clearly had sex with somebody. Clearly? Yes, visibly. She had something in her hair. It was not gel and it was not shampoo. Oh no, I am not buying it at all. 
Miss Meyer, are you playing a game of acceptance and denial? Like, why would you not hold a baby that is supposedly yours? Come back to your senses and stop acting like some cold lunatics. Give some genuine reasons for these things, please. I take the baby out of the car. I physically make this man hold his own child for the first time, thinking that hopefully he would feel some sort of guilt in his heart and know that this is his child when he looks at him in his eyes. He refuses to see that. So standing there holding our baby, he cries asking, I would just rather you not come around anymore. I didn't want to take the baby. You know, this kid's not mine. I don't want to see him or hold him. Who knew that people around the town would give red flags to this couple? Couple. as Mr. Meyer kept believing rumors instead of his girlfriend that jeopardized their relationship. Well, I have to say that trust is the key element, and he had not developed that even for the kids. I have even started saying about the stuff I've heard from multiple people. First it started off as, are you sure those kids are yours? Like they didn't want to really tell me up front the truth that the kids are mine. Then it's like, I don't think them kids are yours, and multiple people tell me this. I had a random person come up to me. I'm in the park with Michael. Some random lady comes up to me and says, I know Serena, that's not your son. I was shocked. I didn't know how to respond to that. I mean like, how would you respond if somebody comes up to you and says, hmm, wait, what? If that's the truth and you didn't want to be with her, then how could you end up Mr. end up having two kids with this woman? I think he is just out of his mind. That's why he's spilling these things like this. I really want to understand this because you're in a relationship, you're living together, and there's so much mistrust. I didn't want a relationship with her. I clearly told her when we first met, I didn't want a relationship with her. You tell her you don't want a relationship, but you end up in one. Yes. And then you have one child, and that child's named after you, and you I continue. Thought, well, we had you continue that. sleeping with her, then potentially have another child. Yeah. Despite these things, baby mama kept confident and stated that he did not sign the birth certificate and he is the deadbeat dad. But now it's time to cut the chase off. But the defendant kept his victim show on and reacted coldly like that. He is not on Xavier's birth certificate. I got my own house. These results really do matter. Yes. Because you want him to support and be responsible for supporting Xavier as well. Because it takes two to tango, your honor, yes. Yeah, and you tango too much, so find his father. This back and forth is going nowhere. The baby daddy wasn't ready to drop his accusations and the baby mama's testimony wasn't helping at all to settle down this dispute. Well, the only hope for this closure is that envelope. When it comes to nine-month-old Xavier Fisher, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Meyer, you are the father. Paternity question began the war between high school sweethearts. Ms. Foster arrived in the courtroom along with her boyfriend, demanding to conduct of a DNA test to prove that Mr. Durden is the father of her child. But the defendant staunchly believed that he was not the father and there was no need for a DNA test. Let's watch whose assertion will bring the closure they need. Ms. Foster, you say getting pregnant at the age of 17 pushed you into adulthood sooner than you expected. You claim Mr. Durden is denying your 15-month-old son, Ian Durden Jr. You are asking the court to order a paternity test so you can prove he is the father because you're struggling financially to make it on your own. Yes, Your Honor. The trial begins on being the deadbeat dad. The mother testified that the alleged dad has done nothing for the baby, even though he is present on the birth certificate, he is still absent from the baby's life. And the reason for his child's negligence is weird like that. You're saying, Mr. Durden, the court should not order a paternity test. You used a condom every single time. Exactly, because I spent my money on condoms. So, yeah, clearly on condoms, but not on the baby. Whereas baby mama did not let him put his safety show on. She stated they were intimated, and that can surely produce a baby. 
She further pleaded that Mr. Durden took her out and played Sherlock Holmes with her like this. She didn't even let me know she went to the doctor. That does I, not matter. I wanted to make sure that I was pregnant before I bring it to him. You know, nobody wants to just like, okay, you know, I'm pregnant. And even if and that it's is not the case. Sure. If it's not the case, we did use condoms sometimes. Not all the time, not all 100% the time. of the time. No, that's not true. Me and Ian broke up. He wanted to talk. He called me to a restaurant. We sat down and we talked for him. He just kept eyeing my phone. Even though he had doubts regarding the paternity of Miss Foster's baby, the defendant signed the birth certificate and he told the court that he was a nice person so that baby mama won't be ashamed. But I am still wondering if that was not his child, why he would even think anything like that. Um, it took her mother and I think one of her friends to tell her it's the right thing to do if the baby's his. You say this child is not yours and you have proof, so I don't even have to when order it. We was in a um, hospital room. I didn't really want to embarrass her in front of her mom and her sisters. The more you testify, the more obvious it is to me that a test is needed. Yeah, Judge Lake, we are all on your side for this. Yes! The most he is testifying, the more he is digging in for the paternity test that he doesn't want. Now you say you're 100% sure, besides the condoms and the fact that you buy them and you buy them and you buy them, I get that. What else? How is it you know for certain this is not your child? Next up, the guy told the court about the phone call he received regarding his girlfriend and her new type of friend. I mean, first of all, I want to know what type of friend it was that got this man to act mad and generated this serious conflict. I had a phone call from a friend. He was telling me that he saw Ivy with someone else. I so have friends, like... It wasn't that type of friend. It was the type of friend you flirt with. It was the type of friend that, oh, your boyfriend is not around, so let me do this. I never flirted with anybody, never had sex with anybody else. Ian is the one and only person that I've ever had sex That's with. That's a lie. Hmm. So that type of friend. Anyway, Judge Lauren determined that the paternity test is necessary to resolve this unsettling dispute. Let's get those results and see if Mr. Durden will have to rethink his safety measures or not. At the end of the day, this court's decision is going to be as to what's in the best interest of this child. In light of the testimony I've heard thus far, it is obvious to me that it is necessary and imperative to order a paternity test. It has been determined by this court. You are the father. Having dual relationships cause dual doubts. Miss Petty dragged two men in the court to determine who is the father of her 11-month-old daughter, whereas Mr. Bell asserted that there is no chance of him fathering her child due to her promiscuous past. Let's watch if the baby's mama will get the closure she is hoping for. Miss Petty, you say you grew up without a father. You don't want the same for your daughter. Yes, Your Honor. Now you've asked the court to DNA test two men who may be her biological father. And Mr. Ball, you're one of the two men we've tested and state you do not believe you father the child of Miss Petty's promiscuous past. Yes, Your Honor. So the trial begins with that doubt part. The defendant asserted that the plaintiff has been sleeping with the other man as well, which made him certain that he cannot be the father of her child. But what he alleged next for the woman is just insane! Who does that in front of so many pupils? So the reason I doubt her is because she was sleeping around with me and Peter at the same time. The only reason I started messing around with her was to get my son. You have an older child together, so you were messing around with her to get him. The way you could get your kid is if you, uh, all she want is the D, so you gotta sleep with her. You know, all you gotta do is sleep around with her. Oh! Oh! So they were still having a sexual relationship even after shutting each other off. But Judge Lauren was interested in the doubt reason so it turned out that Miss Petty played him into having a child. Oh no, man, you are not so naive. This sounds lunatic. Like, how could he allow someone just to pop up and end up having his child? Another reason why I don't believe that she's mine is because who, who last name is on the birth certificate? Mr. Daniels, if you want to see that. I, I would like proof. to see it, Jerome. Please like, hand me Mr. that Daniels evidence. Name, he, she got Mr. Daniels' last name. If it was my baby, she would have had her with my last name like we did with our son. Nonetheless, for better understanding, judge asked the plaintiff how she ended up in this intense situation, over which while testifying this. 
She got emotional, but the defendant didn't take a moment. I want to look at this young lady because I feel like I'm watching a tennis match. My neck's just going back and forth and back and forth. How did you arrive in this place where you have a child you don't know who the father is? For the second time. Did I ask for background singers? No. Okay, then I need you to be quiet. Even though the alleged baby's father had been bashed by the judge already, he could stop his motor mouth in court. But Lauren had enough of his brainless behavior, so she reminded him that who is the boss here like this? What I need to understand from you, Miss Petty, is if you really felt like one man was your child's father, why is it that you'd give her another man's name? You didn't want her to... Why you didn't give her your last name? If Let her speak. Case. And I'm asking I'm the question. Sorry. So if Mr. Balls was sure that he was not the father of the baby, then why did he refuse to take a DNA test? I mean, that sounds odd. Like, if it don't have doubt, then boy, go for it. Prove the lady wrong. You said you weren't avoiding the DNA test. Did you hear this, Jerome? He's not avoiding it, but why can't Mr. Daniel take it right no, then because and there? Why can't there. you take he it? The, like, if he feel like he's the father, he been there the whole time. I'm, all I'm doing is taking care of my son and my daughter. Well, That's what I've been doing. The good if he don't news have not, if Mr. Daniel don't you've have both to do, taken the test yes, now. now. Well, now it's time to hear from the second potential father. He testified that he dreams of him fathering the baby girl. It turned out that he knew about the other guy, but still, he erased those doubts from his mind. Aha! This kind of man is needed in this world. Up until this point, until the baby was born, did you know that she had been having a sexual relationship with Mr. Balls? She told me before because of the situation when we got together. You gave her your last name? Yes. Why is that? I love kids. I'm, I'm a family person, and from my history, I've been a foster child since I was four. Mr. Daniel further told the court that he has caught them red-handed together while they were having a sexual encounter. And Mr. Bali put on the defense show and denied all his testimony. But Judge Lawrence did not let him make everyone boo-hoo the fool. Yeah. Mr. Bali, stop Straight talking lying. and listen. Don't tell me what you were trying to do. I want to know, did you have sex with Miss Petty on that day when Mr. Daniel saw you through the window? Yeah. Okay. Their ongoing discussion further fuels the whole situation instead of helping to resolve the case. But it was quite evident that they need to know the results for the baby and his biological father needs to be a man up. So let's go! Get those results and see what envelope is hiding in it. In the case of Petty versus Ball, Daniel, as it pertains to 11-month-old Alea and whether Mr. Ball or Mr. Daniel is the biological father. Mr. Ball, you are her father. 